Happening sports fans, we got another great interview, and I'm just like I'm stoked that we're back in a baseball season because now I get to talk home runs and strikeouts, and it's actually my language. I'm not having to, to poke around and ask sports questions about stuff I don't know. We got Braden Ross. He is a Christian Patriot currently. He is going to be. Uh, look, look at that. He flexes up perfectly so you can see the sweatshirt of Cal State <laughs> University Northridge, where he is committed to next year. Um, what's going on, man? Thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, let's can, it, we'll, we'll start with that decision, if you don't mind. Why Cal State Northridge? What was that process for you? And ultimately, what led to that decision? Yeah, so I committed in, uh, in April, so almost like a year ago. And um, I, got, I, I did get to visit before everything shut down in January, which was nice. And that, that really helped with my decision. Um, I, I love the coaches, and we have a really like strong group um, going up there, our, our class this year is really, really good. And I felt like coach Serrano, he's been around the block. He's a great, he's a legendary head coach. So I really felt comfortable, uh, going up there with him. So having committed a year ago, were you able to visit there beforehand and, and had actually visited the school and seen it in person before making the decision? Cause I've talked to a couple athletes that during this process, they're like, I've never been there, but I hope I like it. Yeah. I, I got to visit in January. I got to go to a practice and they showed me around campus and stuff, which was really nice. Very nice. Very nice. Um, any advice you'd give to younger student athletes just about the recruiting process now that you're on the other side of it? Uh, don't stress, you know, your time will come. Uh, I'm a long, for a long time. I was like, man, I, some of my friends are getting looks on my travel team and stuff. And, you know, it's, it's stressful. It, it can be really stressful and, you know, you just got to trust, trust in your abilities and, you know, time, your time will come. At the high school level, uh, everybody does a little bit of everything. You probably pitched, caught, played first, third, left, right. You probably uh, were a third base coach for some sort of spring training type game. Um, what are you hoping to do, though, in college? Uh, in college, I, I hope to be, I, I'm for now, a primary outfielder. And hopefully I get to pitch a little bit. But uh, they, they said I might profile more as a first baseman down the road, which, you know, we'll see. A anything I'll do. As a lefty hitter, um, yeah, you, you, you outfield and first base is the very, very generic, typical. Oh, good. Wow. Yeah. Surprise me. This is where I wound up. Uh, I, I do. I want to ask this delicately, but it, I'm glad that you embrace that in college, you will be more potentially of an offensive minded person than a pitcher. Um, yeah. Coach Mitchell, uh, who I am a big fan of out at Christian, uh, he and I have discussed off and on the last couple of years, how you guys as a team have had some seasons where uh, you have perhaps to put it politely, given up entirely on the concept of pitching and just been an offense team <laughs> where you're going to show up. I think he even said at one point he felt like his pitchers were just uh, the red shirts from Star Trek. You know, you knew they were going to get offed by the villain. Uh, they were just the, 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 you know, the disposable guys, but you knew you had enough of an offense to make it work. So I mean, that's not an environment that a lot of people get to be around at the high school level. So what has it been like for your time at Christian to just be with a lot of dudes that can constantly rake all the time? It's fun. Uh, Coach Mitchell said the other day, he, he referred to it as a full court press. He's like, we always apply pressure at all times and we're always there. Like a team has momentum. We're always there to answer. It's, it's, it's really fun. It's, it's a good way to put it. I mean, it, it seems like you have to probably have a handful of memories where you're like, yeah, I remember we were down two and then we bounced four balls off the wall. Um, and it, it's like slam dunk type momentum. I mean, you know, I'm glad that you, 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 you use that full court press because I hadn't thought about it. It's just like, yeah, we can answer every punch with another slam dunk and another and another and another and another. Um, has that helped you become a better hitter? Because that has to take some of the pressure off of it, not being the only guy that the team looks to for for big shots. Yeah, absolutely. You, you, you mentioned like a team gets a couple runs and we answer with a couple balls up the wall. Well, I think our third Lions game tournament, we ended up like having to come back in the sixth and we just put it on them in the sixth. And I just like what you were saying, like we can, we can do it at any time. Like we can just strike. And I think the other teams knowing that is, is kind of to our advantage. They're kind of pitching around a lot of our guys and then they get into jams and then a lot of our guys just come through, which, yeah, it takes a lot of pressure off. It, it's, it's good knowing you can make a mistake and you, the three hitter or the guy behind you can, can back you up. I feel like it also just has to be nice. You must get a lot of opportunities with guys on base. And having people ahead of you on base also just has to be something that not like there's, I'm sure there are multiple kids watching this going, 
man, I would love somebody on second whenever I was hitting, <laughs> uh, let alone second and third every single time you're up in the order. Um, so, you know, those stats have to feel pretty good after the last couple of years. Um, anything specifically pay off during the pandemic? I know a lot of people had time to really focus and tweak one specific part of their game. Anything that you worked on over that, do you really feel like, hey, I've, I, I, I would like to pat myself on the back for how well I'm executing it this season? Uh, my big thing is always consistency with my swing. So uh, over quarantine, I had a lot of downtime, like cage time and like tea time and because you know, we had no games. So I got, a, I got a lot of time to focus on myself and my swing, whereas having to tweak it in game adjustments and stuff, which I think is helping this season for sure. You are a Chiefs fan. Why that? Huge. Why? I, w- I was actually born in Kansas City. Okay, yeah. I lived in Kansas City for seven years. So you're not, you're not onto the bandwagon late. All right. Fair enough. No, yeah. <laughs> you're completely validated. Um, so also Royals then? Uh, actually Cardinals. My mom is from St. Louis. I feel like that's acceptable as long as it wasn't Cubs Cardinals. I don't know of any major rivalry existing between the Royals and the Cardinals. Uh, the Cardinals, I think it's also, weird, yeah. yeah, I think the Cardinals from everything I've learned have one of the widest best fan bases other than the Yankees, which is nuts. Yeah, it's it's a great it's a great place. It's a great fan base. Yeah, we we love the, our team. How are you feeling about Mahomes returning next year? You happy with with him getting healthier, or where where is your emotional stress level for the off season? Who do you think they need to take in the draft? Man, I want them to take an old lineman, but honestly, we we've, we've stacked up a lot on the old line, so I kind of want them to take Kadarius Tony out of Florida, the wide receiver. So yeah, another Mahomes, weapon for Mahomes. Oh, yes, friend, no, Mahomes. he's struggling. Mahomes is struggling so hard to have have uh, anywhere to throw it. <laughs> Um, notice how, again, the Christian kid doesn't say anything about playing defense. He says, no, 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 more offense, more points. That's all, that's all you've become accustomed to, uh, after the last four years. Um, man, uh, just, I I like to always kind of give the kids at the end of, of interviews and thank you again for some of your time. We really appreciate you joining the show. Um, what are some things, singular thing, any good stories, just something that you're going to miss about your time at, at, in high school? Oh man, that's. That's a tough one. I know it's a loaded question, but it, it, it it's just something that, you know, I, some of these, you put them in a time capsule and, and it's just good to he, give the floor. So whatever, however open-endedly you would like to answer that question, uh, let us know. Yeah. Um, I mean, all my friends know, like everyone around the school kind of knows, like, it's kind of like a running joke. I'm like the hype man of the school. So I'm like in the front of the student section and I'm not, I'm at everything. So I think like more thing, like the camaraderie within sports, I think guys, what I'm going to miss the most, I'm like playing with my friends and being there for all my friends that play football and basketball or whatnot. That's, that's always been my favorite thing to look forward to during the week when I'm not playing. So I guess like the sports aspects of things is I'm going to miss a lot. So will we see you uh, leading the, the charge at Cal state Northridge basketball games? Like, are you, are you face painted uh, <laughs> wearing a, a, a Terrero? Are there Terreros? Is that the Matadors, matador? Matadors. Are you wearing a matador costume? Is that like your level of the hype man? Is that you in college up there as they're making their tournament run in March and you're the, you're the guy with the matador costume? Like, like how intense are we really talking here? Hey, I don't, I don't know about all that, but if they ask me to do it, I'll do it, but I'm not going to voluntarily do that. You're not dressed up as the Christian Patriot on, on a Friday night no. uh, for the foot deal. Um, that, uh, hey, hey, man, I've met some of those kids. I was that kid for a little while, uh, and I went to La Jolla, so I had the Viking horns on and would wear a fur, and I annoyed the heck out of everybody. Uh, I'm, yes, I'm surprised I wasn't even kicked out of my own student section uh, for just being too ridiculous at times. But, hey, I appreciate the sentiment, man. Great great minds think alike. Folks, this is just another one of the kids that I'm, I'm telling you, we're always, I'm always saying we're a baseball town, we're a baseball town, we're a baseball town. So please go check him out. We'll include all the information on uh, their schedule below this interview on our YouTube. But if people have to come out and check out just one of your games, what's the big one uh, that you want people to watch this year? Who's the main team that you've got circled on the calendar left? Uh, usually we have like one or two, but in two weeks, we actually play Cathedral Saints, Santana and Madison back to back to back to back. So any one of those four, you gotta come. Those are going to be battles. 
guarantee you there's like nine kids per game there that are going to be either drafted or looked at by college and pro scouts in the next uh, couple of weeks. That's an insane. You're going to run, run the gauntlet there. Um, I, we will send our prayers and well wishes for, uh, for <laughs> we'll you, you guys <laughs> and for opposing pitching and just for everybody coming out of that one safe uh, for people in the foul section for getting balls hit. Cause there's, yeah. there's gonna probably be some very deep line drives. Braden, thank you so much for being on with us. We really appreciate it. Congratulations on your commitment to Cal state Northridge and, uh, for representing the San Diego CIF section so very well. We'll talk to you soon, sports fans.